now we are going to discuss about wies molecular field theory of ferromagnetism we know ferromagnetic materials they show spontaneous magnetization that means in the absence of external applied field materials or metals like iron nickel cobalt exhibit magnetic behavior in the absence of external magnetic field we proposed a molecular field theory and postulated that there is an internal magnetic field or internal molecular field which causes the spontaneous magnetization behavior this internal field is responsible for spontaneous magnetization of a ferromagnetic substance so that only the material possess magnetization even in the absence of external applied field the net or effective magnetic field when you apply some external magnetic field on the ferromagnetic substance so spins in the material will be like this random some may be in the some different direction right even in the absence of external magnetic field some of the molecules will exhibit spontaneous magnetization right this magnetization is due to the internal molecular field that was proposed by wies now see the net or effective the net or effective magnetic field effective or net magnetic field capital h e is a sum of applied magnetic field plus internal molecular field h i is a internal molecular field h is a applied field right and this internal molecular field h i the internal molecular field h i is directly proportional to the intensity of magnetization i is intensity of magnetization h is h i internal molecular field is directly proportional to the intensity of magnetization h i is directly proportional to i right now let us replace this proportionality constant by a constant h i equals to lambda i where lambda is a v is constant Well, lambda is a wise constant, and this equation will become the effective molecule, effective magnetic field H E becomes H E becomes H plus applied magnetic field plus internal molecular field lambda into I. Now, what we are going to do is. we will we are going to take langevin theory of ferromagnetism he has given that intensity of magnetization for ferromagnetic material is i'll write here from langevin from langevin theory of langevin theory from langevin theory the intensity of the intensity of 
magnetization of the intensity of magnetization of the ferromagnetic material of the ferromagnetic material is is i equals to n mu square by 3 k t boltzmann constant into t times of times of h plus lambda i this equation you have to remember we are taking from the langevin theory of ferromagnetism the intensity of magnetization of the ferromagnetic material is given by i equals to i equals to n mu square 3 kbt into h plus lambda i now what i am going to do is i'll substitute the values of h plus lambda i here and we are going to derive this equation right we are going to simplify right before i simplify here i take a some constant n mu square by 3 kb as a curie constant right here the curie constant which is right what we have done is he is a effective magnetization h plus hi right h i is internal molecular field is directly proportional to the intensity of magnetization and that proportional to constant we replace it by a constant lambda h i equals h plus lambda i and this value h equals h plus lambda i now from langevin theory of ferromagnetism the intensity of magnetization of the ferromagnetic material is this one right and here what we are going to do is we are going to take curie constant C equals to n mu square by 3 kb. This value I am substituting here. Then I becomes C by T into h plus lambda into I. Right? And here what I am going to do is I am going to take h as a common term here. I equals to C into H by T times of one plus lambda by lambda into I by I by H, right? Lambda into I by H, right? Now take this H to the LHS I by H. Equals to C by T times of one plus lambda into I by H. We know the susceptibility chi. Susceptibility chi is. I by H, right? So I replace this one by this a molecular field theory. I am representing as a chi m, chi m equals to C by T times of one plus lambda into chi m, right? Chi m equals to C by T times of one plus lambda into chi m. So now I'm going to rearrange in terms of the chi m equals to so and so equation, right? Chi m equals to equal. So this, if I multiply here, c by t equals to chi m minus lambda into chi m. right now it 
to c by t right c by t times of chi into lambda right now take chi m as a con uh, common c by t equals to chi m times of 1 minus lambda into c by t right One minus lambda c by t. Take LCM here, right? C by t equals to chi m into t minus lambda into c by t, right? Here t t gets cancelled, and then chi m is nothing but c by t minus c lambda c lambda is a curie with constant which is theta then chi m becomes c by t minus theta right so theta is curie with constant right chi m equals to c by t minus theta so chi by chi m equals to c by t minus c lambda otherwise here we are going to have three cases when we have the term t minus theta or t minus c lambda we'll be having three options let us see here in the first case, I show you here, when t equals to, when t equals to theta, that means Curie is constant, then what will happen, c by, chi m becomes, c by, theta minus theta is nothing but 0, that means c by 0 will become infinity, chi m becomes tends to infinity that means the material is ready to attain external magnetization the material is ready to attain external magnetization and if I see the case 2 I is better In case 2, that means T is greater than theta, that means T is greater than theta, that means you are going to have a positive value, is it? you are going to have a positive value. In this case, the thermal agitation opposes the alignment of internal molecular magnets. Whatever we are applying external magnetization, so what will happen here is the T minus theta is a positive value that means temperature agitation is going to be there. That temperature agitation opposes the alignment of molecular magnets. Then it will become a paramagnetic substance. The material becomes a paramagnetic substance. Right? In case 3, when t is less than theta, when t is less than theta, the temperature is below Curie temperature, the material behaves as a ferromagnetic material. When theta is when t is less than theta, material behaves as a ferromagnetic material. At low temperatures, which field energy is great and sufficient to overcome thermal agitation. Here what will happen due to the thermal agitation material shows a paramagnetic material. Thermal agitation results in the molecular magnets are not aligned in the field direction. Whereas Curie temperature is less than theta, then what will happen? They are aligned in the field direction. That means material shows a perfect ferromagnetic behavior. Right? And probably everyone knows that the Curie temperature is nothing but a ferromagnetic material. Uh, which have a critical temperature below critical temperature they behave as a ferromagnetic nature and above which 
they behave as a paramagnetic nature the temperature at which this phenomena occurs that temperature we call as a curie temperature